immediately comes to mind. We are revising our guidelines to help accommodate the current environment, and we want you to be confident that Athene is built for this. Now I'll turn it over to Amy. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, Rod. Um, as Rod mentioned, I'm Amy Pietmeyer, Vice President and Senior Counsel at Athene. Um, and we yeah. recognize that this, that this is a challenging, challenging time, time and that uh, your, your clients, clients still have needs that need to be met. Um, so one of the ways that we're hoping to help you meet their needs is to adjust our guidelines um, and provide some you know, guardrails for telephone and video solicitation. Um, um, so, you know, we, we have, have a new policy that's out there. It, it was sent uh, by a link, link to the field, I believe, about a week ago. Um, I think there was a link in the invitation for this webinar, and, and our email follow will also include links to this uh, policy. So for purposes of today, I'm going to go over some high-level do's and don'ts of that policy. Um, and as Rod mentioned, we'll have time for questions at the end if there are any questions. So do's. Um, obviously, everyone needs to have the appropriate producer licensing, licensing training, training, and appointments in the states, in the states where those solicitations are going to occur. For example, for example if a customer is in Iowa, Iowa the producer is in Illinois, Illinois the, producer the producer must be licensed in both Iowa and yeah. Illinois. Um, I would um, also encourage you as part of this to keep an eye out for your various state regulators. Um, there, there are some, some guidance that they're providing to producers regarding training, licensing, and appointments right now as a result of COVID-19. So, so just, to, make sure just make sure that you are aware and checking those as well. Two, we, we want, want you to ensure, ensure the customer is, pre is present in her resident, resident, her resident state. So, so during the solicitation, solicitation sale, application, application signing, or a new contract, contract delivery, delivery, the client needs to be in their resident, resident state. state. Um, um, this, this is a, a relative no greater and, and probably fairly easy for most of us to manage at this point, but please be sure you're using a private location when you're using telephone or video solicitation to maintain your client's um, confidential personal information. Um, you know, in, in a not COVID environment, what we would mean here is don't be hanging out at Starbucks. Um, for or complete all, all the forms before your customer signs the document. Um, customers should not be signing blank documents to turn to you for filling out. Ensure the customer signs completed forms and returns those completed forms to producer, and producers should be returning those to a team. As a part of the sales process, please be sure you're keeping a record of the meetings held with customers or prospects by telephone or video platforms. Note the date, Note the date and, time, and time, whether, whether anyone, anyone else participated in the meeting, the subject matter and materials that were discussed. Subject matter and materials that documentation were documentation really documentation is key. really is key. Um, I know that there's, um, I know a, that there's a, a bit of a coming on. I got my feedback. I'm not sure how I'm going to correct that at this point. Um, if there are any re reschedules necessary due to delays or interruptions, um, be sure that you're scheduling those. Uh, as, as part of that, we'll also use, need you to continue to follow AML guidelines and know your customer. Um, you'll need to review the customer's government issued ID while on the video conference or if it's a telephone conference, you'll need to obtain a copy of their ID um, and be sure that you are confirming information when you are talking with your clients. Ensure that both you and your client have exact copies of all of the advertising, marketing materials, and forms that are being reviewed. Um, as a best practice, you should be sure that you're confirming each piece as you're reviewing it with the client. Deliver the issued annuity contract to the consumer in the state where they were residing. If you can't deliver in person, it does need to be tracked. Um, it cannot be email delivery 
um, with you reviewing their receipt via telephone or video. As far as don'ts, cold calling is still not acceptable. Um, Non-resident applications conducted via telephone or video solicitation are also not allowed. It is acceptable if the customer is Iowa, the producer is in Illinois, and the application is signed in Iowa. What is prohibited is if the customer is in Iowa, the producer is in Illinois, and the application state is Illinois. And as I mentioned earlier, delivery of the annuity contract electronically via email or another method is not acceptable. And one last note that we'd have is telephone and video solicitation is not allowed in New York and any other state that may specifically prohibit their use. Um, although Athene doesn't endorse telephone or video platform, we recognize that they are cost effective and potentially the only means that we can meet with clients, particularly in this time where there are de facto bans on face-to-face -face communication. Um, again, I want to remind you that the PDF is available online through Athene Connect. Uh, the uh, invitation for today also included a link to that policy and the follow-up email will include a link to the policy. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Annie at this point. Um, and if there are questions, I'll be happy to take those at the end. Hi, Amy, would you mind stepping back through the first two slides? Just the echo has improved greatly, um, but sure. hoping that um, if you could just cover those again, it would be great for the audience. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, no, not a problem. So these are again the do's of our policy. So that first one is have appropriate producer license training and appointment in the states where the video or telephone solicitation will occur. Um, for example, if the client is in Iowa, the producer is in Illinois, the producer needs to be licensed in both Iowa and Illinois. Um, at this point, I'd also, as I mentioned earlier, remind you to keep track of your various regulators and the guidance that they are issuing in response to COVID-19. Um, there are several states that have specific guidance out regarding producer licensing and training. Um, ensure that the customer is present in his or her resident state as, as part of both the solicitation, sale, application signing, and annuity contract delivery. Um, use a private location when you're using telephone or video solicitation to maintain the confidentiality of, of your client's personally identifiable information. Um, while this isn't probably a difficult uh, point to do at this time when we're all at home or sheltering in place, um, but as a go forward measure, this is really targeted. Don't be at your local Starbucks. Uh, complete all your forms for the customer signs documents. And ensure your customer signs the completed forms and return completed forms to you for you to deliver to a fee. Uh, keep a record of each meeting held with your customer or prospect. You should note the date and time whether anyone else participated, the subject matter that was covered, the materials that were covered. Documentation really will be key and what the states will be used to verify and looking at these as well as the theme. Um, if there are any technical delays or interruptions in the service, please reschedule your meeting. 大家好,今天是2020年的4月8号星期三 Um, I don't know where the echo cut off, Annie, so did I catch anything? Yes, you're great. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Amy. 
All right, well, we are also working on the uh, technical difficulties related to the slide movement. So thank you for your patience. Uh, we've got our marketing team engaged to help us and we'll hopefully hear something shortly. But for the sake of time, I'm going to jump into the section around how we're making it easier for you to do business at a thing during this time. So first of all, I'd like to just begin by um, saying Athena's here for you. Our offices are open, uh, including our West Des Moines location. Our teams are here to serve you uh, between the hours of 8 to 5 Central at our 800 number, which is 888-266-8489. And this line will connect you with our skilled teams that are dedicated to answering questions uh, related to new business, post-issue, claims, and agency services questions. This line will also connect you with our experienced sales desk team. And as you can see, the slides are, are here with us now during the presentation. While our offices remain open, uh, most of our employees are working from home, just given the increased number in COVID-19 cases. In the event that all employees would need to work from home, we do have plans in place to make that happen. Even with our employees working from home, I wanna stress that it is business as usual. Our employees are equipped with the same equipment that they have in the office at home, such as dual monitors and headsets. And they've um, adapted just very quickly uh, to this remote environment of working from home and have done an excellent job uh, processing business effectively and efficiently. In fact, uh, we've managed to stay within our service level goals as we stood all of our teams up to work remotely. As an example, during the month of March, our average speed of answer was 37 seconds. Our goal is to answer calls with an average speed of 60 seconds or less, so we beat that uh, service level goal. Even during these times, we understand the importance of continuing to hire. Uh, so that's something that we've actively been doing. Uh, we're just conducting the interview hiring and training process virtually, and that's been going well. As you can see, our teams have adapted very well. Uh, they are resilient. As we move on to the next slide, I want to cover some of the key resources that Athene has in place to make it easier for you to do business with us during these times of social distancing. First, we support electronic submissions of new business on three platforms. The platforms include Firelight, AnnuityNet, and Affirm. For Firelight, several distributors have their own instance, but we too also offer an instance on our website, Athene Connect, if it's available to you. For our instance of Firelight, we do have step-by-step -step instructions that are available on our portal to walk you through the e-application process. We also offer a webinar that will guide you through it that is led by one of our experienced internal wholesalers. It's important for me to point out that not all of these platforms are available to you, so please check with your back office to validate what is available to you. These electronic platforms are intuitive and easy to use, and they do offer many benefits, which include e-signature. They contain our required up-to-date forms, uh, which help reduce good order issues. In addition to Firelight, AnnuityNet, and Affirm, we also offer other avenues for submitting business to Athene, which includes email, and you can email documents to our uh, email address of submitcustomerdocs.athene.com. You can upload documents on our website with our document upload tool, fax and mail. And following this call, as Tiffany mentioned when we kicked off today's session, we will be emailing a link for the Doing Business Guide. It is also available here as a handout. And that guide steps through specific details around using these other opportunities. So for example, for emailing documents to us, there are specific formatting requirements. And we do also ask that you attach one email per client and that the subject line includes the client name and contract number if applicable. 
As I shared with you a few moments ago, uh, the utilization of firelight annuity net in a firm reduces NIGO issues. But when good order issues do arise, we want you to be aware that we do take a vast majority of our good order requirements over a recorded line from the client and or producer. The producer and client can call our 800 number that I referenced earlier. Some examples though, however, some good order requirements do require the client or producer to provide those in writing. And I wanted to take a couple of moments and just provide a few examples of some of the most common good order issues that would require something to be provided in writing. So first of all, product training requirements. If you are not compliant with product training requirements at the time of solicitation, a new application signature page will be required with the new uh, signed and date. The date will have to be on or after the product training completion. And that will require full signatures from the client and you as the producer. Another common good order issue that would require uh, in-person contact for those signatures would be incorrect or outdated forms. So I do encourage the utilization of those electronic pl platforms that I covered because they do contain the current required forms for a sale. Any forms that have missing customer or producer signatures and then transfer paperwork too, simply because we aren't able to make corrections to the transfer paperwork. For example, if the uh, transfer or the exchange is not like to like, we can't go in and edit that owner and annuitant information. Um, so that too would require correction from the client before the seeding company would release funds to us. So key message there is please ensure you're compliant with product training before writing one of our products. You can do your product training completion on our website at Athene Connect, or you can contact our agency services team. And then two, just I recommend utilization of one of the platforms I mentioned in the event you have access to them to help ensure that you have the current uh, and correct form. As we move on to the next slide, slide 16, I'll be highlighting some of the valuable resources that make it easier for your customers to do business with a theme from a post-issue perspective. So first of all, we take certain post-issue transactions over the phone, many of which include our most common requests. So we will accept partial withdrawals and surrenders up to $75,000 in most situations. Systematic withdrawals, RMDs, address changes, and servicing producer changes. Similar to what I covered on our new business front, uh, we do accept service forms to be emailed to our submit customer docs at athene.com email address, along with uploaded on our website using the document upload tool, fax, and mail as well. So in the future, we are looking at other ways to continue to make it easier for you during these times. A couple examples include the ability to accept initial premium electronically via ACH on Firelight Annuity Net in a firm. And we are also looking at additional e-signature capabilities. We'll continue to keep you informed on our progress related to these opportunities. On the next slide, I'll provide an overview of Athene Connect um, and also our client website. There's important and valuable tools that are offered 24 seven that I think are important to highlight on our call here today. So first of all, uh, clients have the ability to view their contract details, including their account values on our website. They can obtain copies of Athene correspondence. This includes their contract along with their tax forms. Just like calling into the call center, they have the ability to request withdrawals. And then on our website, they can also update their contact information and beneficiaries. For you as the producer and for back offices, our website also 
also provides a number of valuable resources. These include our pending new business reports, book of business, and our commission report, our document upload tool that I referenced earlier for uploading forms. The website contains our current forms and marketing materials, along with our pending new business requirements for the business you've written, along with copies of your client contracts, we also offer alert. A timely. Important messages on your book of business. And you do have the ability to alter the types of alert messages that you receive, but it's a great way to stay connected with what's going on with your book of business. So for those of you who haven't registered for Athene Connect, I would encourage you to check out. On slide 18, there is an image of our uh, doing business guide, which will uh, be shown here shortly. But this will show you a PDF that's available on Athene Connect, along with a link um, that I mentioned that will be sent to you following this call. This guide was also recently uh, distributed uh, this past Friday, uh, likely to a number of you. So noticing that the slides aren't moving at the moment, so I'm gonna keep, keep going here. Um, uh, but then there is another slide too that highlights our Firelight webinar that I mentioned. And this is really hot off the press. Again, I mentioned it was completed by one of our experienced internal wholesalers. And it can be located uh, by clicking view all webcasts on a theme connect and the webinar itself is titled e app demo. And just like our website, um, if you haven't registered for it, and if you haven't uh, uh, checked out firelight for those of you who have access to it, I would highly encourage you uh, to check it out. So as I wrap up here, um, I hope that you you know all see just during these times of uncertainty, you know one thing is certain that Athena is here for you. Uh, we're here to serve you and to deliver the resources that you and your customers need to do business more easily. So uh, Tiffany, I hope that you're here with us, but I'll go ahead and turn it back to you uh, over to open up the call for questions. Thank you. Hi folks, I'm here. I hope that you can you can hear me now. If you can, give me a a response. We can hear you, Tiffany. Great. All right. Thanks again for bearing with me. Uh, these these times are challenging, but we're working through them here. So I did just want to again um go over any questions that were submitted i do appreciate um everyone letting us know when we lost our audio and uh keeping us um keeping us honest here so i think we did have a question um i'm licensed in alabama if i need to license in another state do i have to redo reg ed for a different state Um, so this is Amy. Um, if you are licensed in one state and then you are moving to another state uh, to to accommodate a client that's in another state, you'll need to follow the licensing guidelines, um, including the continuing education for that state. Um, now, in some instances, some states will accept your NAIC, NAIC suitability training. Um, model law training from one state for another state. What you would not have to recomplete would be your product specific training with the theme. Great, thanks Amy. Another question we have, would you please send us a transcript? I can certainly follow up. I know, I, I apologize, we did have those audio issues. So I will follow up with um, the user guide PDFs, all of the good stuff that um, might have been missed at the beginning. So look out for that. Um, another question we have is, um, I'm in Florida where there are a lot of snowbirds and dual residencies. Would you be able to write something from, from New York visiting Florida? 
the same again. If they are just visiting Florida, that would still be a non-resident sale. If they are a dual resident citizen and consider themselves a resident of both Florida and New York um, and satisfy residency requirements, then um, yes, that sale would be okay. But if they are just a visitor, even if it's a long-term visitor, it's a non-resident sale. Next question is, if we submit the case from Crump, can we still directly check the status from your website? Yes, this is Annie. So if a case is submitted through Crump, yes, you as the producer do have the ability to view the case status details on our website at Theme Connect. You'll just need to register for that site. Great. Another question. A theme is exploring other e-signature options like DocuSign. Do you have a timeline for when it may be accepted? Well, currently, so we offer the e-signature capabilities on our instance of Firelight. So if you have access to our instance, I would encourage you to use that platform for the e-signature capabilities that are available for new business submissions. The e-signature capabilities are also available on AnnuityNet and the firm. So outside of um, the initial new business submissions, as I shared on our call today, we take the vast majority of new business NIGO requirements over a recorded line too. So the um, need from e for e-signature, while important, um, there's we've had a plenty of other options here currently available to address those needs. Um, as it relates to what we're currently exploring, I will continue to keep everybody informed in terms of what availabilities we will offer. Great, thanks, Amy. We have another attendee submit a question regarding um, if you have if you have your submitted current contract and it has been completed and you have a policy number, but there was an issue and more money was submitted, will the policy get a new policy number or would we use the same one? So we would need to look into the specifics of that particular case uh, to determine whether or not we'd have to reverse back that case, close it out, and issue a new contract number. Um, if you would like to submit that question to your internal wholesaler, we'd be happy to dig into that specific scenario for you and, and let you know how we can help accommodate you. Another question here, what forms are needed for a group annuity and or form a pension fund? Can this also be done remotely? I can read that one more time too. I was reading it verbatim here. What forms are needed for a group annuity and or and from a pension fund? Can this be done remotely? So um, we accept individual IRA contracts, so we do not accept group annuities. I, I don't know if that's more of the question. Again, with that one, if we didn't answer that for you, um, definitely reach out to our sales desk and um, your, your wholesaler contact, and we can um, get you any follow-up information if that wasn't a cool answer for you. We do have some more questions. Just um, read them through them here. Are there policies regarding recording the meeting with a prospect? Are the policies specific to a theme regarding the recording of a Zoom or similar meeting with the prospect. So this is Amy, I'll take this one. Um, state laws actually vary on whether you can record, whether that be by video or telephone recording. 
So you'll need to confirm with various state laws. Athene does not have a specific policy requiring recording of the call or a video solicitation, but what it does require is that you comply with state law. Um, so some states require that you have consent before you can record. Others only require one party consent. For those, you'll need to confirm with each of your individual states as well as the client's state. Okay. Due to teleprocess, is it true that even the client, even if the client is out of the country? Can you read that one again? Tiffany sure. didn't catch it. Okay. Due to teleprocess, is it true that even is it true that even if the client is out of the country that might have been so if the client is out of the country it would not be an allowable sale for a scene um we don't have international sales and okay. they would be a non-resident at that point they need to be back home in their resident state okay i think that answered it they followed up with can we sell when the client is out of the country? So, thank you. Oh, another kind of specific. We live five miles from the state line of Tennessee and Georgia. Is it still considered a non resident state? A, re a non resident state? Uh, so if the client was a resident of Georgia and you were in Tennessee, as long as the sale was made with the client located in Georgia, it's still a resident sale to the client. If the, if the client signs paperwork in Tennessee and is a Georgia resident, that's a non-resident sale. All right, we have a caller from California asking, with Crump, they described inquiries regarding institutional annuities. Do you know if that pertains to group annuities? Tiffany, you, you cut out there right at the beginning. I What I heard is it's a question related from Crump around their institutional annuity program. Yes. Is that so, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, Carla from California is asking, with Trump, they describe the inquiries regarding institutional annuities. Do you know if that pertains to group annuities? I will have to take this one back unless Amy or Rod, if you know. I'm not Amen. aware on this one. Um, I mean, we don't have no. group annuities. All right, well, yeah, we'll find that question and make sure we we follow back up with you um, on that one. A couple more questions here. When will Form 5498 for 2019 be done for qualified contracts? Uh, so I'll take that one, Tiffany. Okay. Uh, 5498s are not due until the end of May. Um, so at this point, I would not anticipate anything until closer to the end of May. Um, because those are actually reporting contributions as well, and the deadline for making an IRA contribution has been extended to July 15th. Uh, most carriers are actually watching the IRS to see if there will be an extension of the 5498 deadline. At this time, there isn't one, so we're still anticipating a May 31. Great, thank you. So I believe that uh, that covers all of the questions. Again, I think there were a, a handful of questions about um, if this this webinar was recorded. It was. Um, 
you might have to fast forward through the parts that got a little choppy there just due to some, some audio issues. But I do have that recording to send out so you have this. Again, we have the virtual sales toolkit, those PDFs that we had mentioned. Those will all be sent out via email and also available on a theme connect. So we will make sure that um, all the topics that were covered today you have access to. And again, we appreciate for um, you guys for listening in. All of the questions, I think that they were um, really great, insightful, and um, glad that we had the, our presenters on the line to help walk through any of those. Just seeing if we got any last minute questions in. I believe that is it, folks. All right. Well, thanks again for joining. We're going to close it down. But again, any other questions, feel free to reach out to the sales desk, your um, account rep, and we'll make sure to get you taken care of. Thank you.